Here we go, part three of chapter seven. So let's grab the last sheet. Here we're gonna make an amortization schedule. When you're working on your MyIT Lab Grader, it's probably gonna ask you the loan amount. Over here, you're gonna have a total amount and a down payment. So your loan amount is actually the purchase price minus your down payment, that's your loan amount. So it's really simple, one minus the other. Now what I'm gonna do is reverse engineer the present value of all future payments. So I'm looking at payments here, and what it says here, it says returns the present value of an investment, the total amount of a series of future payments, what it's worth today. So this is gonna give me the price of my vehicle today. Actually, before I get in there, let's adjust our interest rate. So I'm gonna click in E3, and I wanna make a monthly interest rate. I'm gonna do that by going equals the APR annual percentage interest rate, divided by the number of months in a year, B5. Do I need to lock anything in? No, because I'm not copying anywhere. Number of payments equals number of years times how many months in a year. So now we're looking at monthly rate, monthly payments. With those two in mind, now I can go up here and go PV for the present value of the loan. Hit tab, go to my function argument dialog box. Go ahead and open that up. Right here, it asks me for the rate. Now, had I not calculated the rate for a monthly rate, then I would have done it inside of the PV function. Because it says the rate is the interest rate for a period. For example, if it's 6% with quarterly payments, you would say 6% divided by four. Well, we've already done that. We've taken our 3.25% divided by 12. So I'm just gonna click on rate. Am I gonna copy it anywhere? No, I'm not. So I'm just gonna say tab, N-P-E-R, number of total payments. Well, that's gonna be number of payments right here. Tab, payment amount. Now this one, I need to start off with a negative sign because I want it to return a positive value on my worksheet right here. My payment is over here. So that's my payment. It says my total loan amount is 13,531. I don't need future value here. I don't need type, just click okay. Now let's go over here and start with the beginning balance. The beginning balance equals whatever my loan is. So here's my starting price right here. That's the beginning balance tab. Now I'm going to go to my monthly payment. This one's pretty easy because I tell you what the monthly payment is here in B2. So I'll just go B2 and let's lock it in. So I'm going to lock in the row. So when I copy it down, it always remains on that payment. Click enter. Now right here, I'm going to grab this payment. I'm going to drag it all the way down to it's in row 43. That's 36 payments. Now remember when you're making like a car payment, it's the same payment every month, $395 every month. Okay, so that's a constant. That's not going to change on us. Now we're going to go to the interest paid. This one is going to, we're going to use a function and it's the interest payment tab. And I'm going to open up the function argument dialog box to show you all the little parts and pieces here. First thing we have is our rate. What is the rate of our loan? Well, we know the monthly rate right here in E3. Go ahead and lock it in. The payment period. Now this one's kind of tricky. That is the very first payment. Now, when I copy that down, then it'll be payment number two or payment number three. So that one, I'm not going to lock in. Number of payments. Well, we know it's going to be 36. Lock it in. PV is bold, so I need to put something in for the present value. Again, that's going to be the loan amount. So I'll go negative E2. That's what my loan's worth today. F4, two times, lock it in and say, okay. Now, if I've done everything correctly, the interest each month should be less and less as I go closer to paying off the loan because I would have a smaller balance. And I do. Every month, it gets a little less and a little less. The principal payment function is going to have an inverse effect to the interest paid because we're gonna start off with a smaller principal payment and as we go to the end, more of it goes to your asset and a very little of it goes to the bank, which is the bank's part is the interest. So we're gonna start off with a principal payment tab. I'm gonna open up the function argument dialog box again. Again, this should be pretty easy. Rate, lock it in. The payment period, well, we're talking about for record it crossed eight, that's the first one. We're not gonna lock it in because Later, we want it to move down. Number of payments, that's gonna be 36. Lock it in. And our present value, again, let's start off with a negative sign and click on our 13,000. Click OK. Now we're at 358. The closer we get to the bottom of our payment, oh, check that out. Something didn't get locked in. So I'm gonna come back up to 
my top and I can tell right now I didn't lock in E2 and if you get something like this evaluate your formula okay so I'm just gonna go F4 two times if you caught it before I went ahead and clicked OK good on you so I'm gonna drag it down now all my values pop in see I start with 358 and they do get a little bit bigger every month now my ending balance this one's pretty easy equals my beginning balance right here minus how much principal did I pay him this much right here so in E8 enter do I want to do anything with that well not yet so I'm going to come over here and I'm going to say the beginning balance of month two is the exact same number as the ending balance of month one so I'll go back and reference the end balance there click enter now that I have a reference in my cell here in B9, I'm just going to drag that down. Right now it says zero because, hey, there's nothing in this column. Now I'm going to copy this one down. This snaps right in place. It says I have zero amount on the very bottom. Let's format. So I'm going to go across B8 through F8. Hit my dollar signs. That's going to make it accounting rather than currency. Let's grab everything in the middle here. Give it a comma style. That is accounting without the dollar sign. And then let's total C, D, and E. I'm going to do that by just clicking auto sum. They are formatted correctly. And let's go ahead and give it a total style. Hey. Okay. That looks good. So far, so good. We're going to do an accumulative interest and accumulative payment or principal. All that means is my interest right here is just going to add both of them. And if I come down here to my status bar, I can see that the sum is $72.32. If I were to look at three months, now it's 107. So I want this to show me that it's 32, 70, 107, whatever it is. Or 36 is the first one. So I just want it to have, I can go across, look at any time, see what my cumulative interest to that month is. For this one, I'm going to go equals C-U-M for cumulative. And the first one that pops up is interest payment. I'm going to say yes. Now, this one's a little bit different from the other one we worked on. It's a little bit more. But again, rate. So I'm going to pick my current rate. Lock it in. Number of payments, so total number of payments, lock it in. The present value of the loan. Now, if I put a negative sign in here, I'm gonna throw an error. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select amount, lock it in. Now start period is gonna be the first month. Always the first month. The first month never changes, that's the date. So lock it in. The ending period, however, will change. Now, if I'm talking about the first record, the ending is the first month. When I copy this down, it'll go two, three, four, it'll grow. Now there's a little slider handle here. Make sure you go here and pick the bottom one. That last option is zero. That's just, is the payment made before or after? We're gonna use zero. If we've done everything right, we should have $36.65, negative amount. Now let's go up between the equal sign and the C. Put a negative sign, hit enter, $36. Now I'm gonna copy just one time down, 72. See, remember we, we added those two before? It's a cumulative. So now I'm gonna just drag the formula down and I can see at any given month how much interest I've paid on the loan. Total is gonna be $688 and that $688 matches down here in D44. Now let's do the same thing for the principal. Equals, cumulative, now the one on the bottom, principal, tab. Open up my function argument dialog box. What's the interest rate? Here, lock it in. Number of payments, 36, lock it in. Present value, E2, lock it in. Start period, A8, lock it in. Ending is still A8. That one we are not going to lock in because we want it to change. And the last one is a zero. Click OK. Shows a negative number. We want to make sure that shows positive. So between the equals and the C, I'm going to put a negative sign. Hit enter. So this $385 here matches the principal that I have over here. When I copy down, I should have 13 531, which is the same number I have, 13, 531. So that looks good. Now let's go ahead and group our sheets. So I'll click on the first sheet, say select all, page layout. For this one, I'm going to say I want one page and one page. I only need three pages. That's all I need. Now I'm going to go to my page setup, header footer, custom footer, put my name in the first one, sheet name in the middle, file name on the right. Okay, let's do a quick print preview. I always like to do a print preview just to see what my pages look like. First page looks good, second page looks good, and the third page looks good. Have everything there. Okay, now I'm going to hit save just because I want it to be saved. Click on my export as an XPS. Make sure I select options, entire workbook. I need every single page in your PDF. Click OK. 
and publish. We're done. Compress both files in your folder, upload to Moodle, and I'll see you on the next chapter.